Praise the Lord. This is Brother Harlan Parrott. We're continuing our study on the plan that God has for mankind. And we're on lesson number five, the original creations of God. And we're on point number seven about Lucifer's reign or the world that then was. Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 23 through 26. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 through 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. And the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast up on thou wast up on the holy mountain of God thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God I will destroy thee O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Colossians 1, verse 15 through 18. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. The length of Satan's or Lucifer's rule is unknown. Number eight, there are other thrones and dominions and principalities and powers placed over other parts of the universe. Ephesians 1 verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 3.10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And of course Colossians 1, 15 through 18. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. First Peter 3.22 Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers 
being made subject unto him. Number nine, the kingdom of God universal. God the supreme moral governor of the universe and all in harmony with him. This was the original creations we're speaking of. We found this in Job chapter 38, verse 1 through 41. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with doors when it brake forth as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and brake up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and there shall thy proud waves be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment, and from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm hath shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Where is the way whereof light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof, that thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the paths to the house thereof? Knowest thou it, because thou wast then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? He who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder, to cause it to rain upon the earth where no man is, on the wilderness where there is no man, to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. Hath the rain of father, or who hath begotten the drops of dew, out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who hath gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds, that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightnings? that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are. Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clouds cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion, or feel the appetite of the young lions, when they couch in their dens, and abide in the covert to lie in wait? Who hath provided for the raven his food? When his young ones cry unto God, they wonder for lack of meat. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. Daniel 4, verse 25. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. 
Daniel chapter 4 verse 32 and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will Daniel 4:35 and all the inhabitants inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou the length of the rule of the universal harmonious kingdom before lucifer started his rebellion is not known number 10 lucifer the original ruler of the planet earth conceives the idea that he can get the cooperation of other angelic beings in the universe and dethrone God and become the exalted supreme ruler of the universe. We find this in Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also up on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 1 Timothy 3, verse 6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Point number 11. Lucifer carries out his plans, and through pride falls in foremost rebellion by slander and accusations against the Almighty. He causes his own earth kingdom subjects and over one-third of God's angels to sin and rebel against him. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The earth enters its first sinful career. We see this, and we saw this earlier with Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through 14 where Lucifer said in his heart he's going to go into heaven and dethrone God and also Ezekiel 28 verse 11 through 17 speaks of the actual anointed cherub which was Lucifer before he fell in the garden of Eden verse Timothy 3 6 not a novice lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil the length of the uprising is unknown Point number 12, Lucifer instigates rebellion and persuades everyone possible to rebel. He openly breaks relation with God and God's government. 
and leads his rebels from the appointed place of mobilization on the earth into heaven to dethrone God, but he is met by Michael and the faithful angels and is defeated and cast as lightning back to the earth. We see this in, as we stated earlier in Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? And Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 17, where the, he's the anointed cherub that covereth or protected, and he was in a garden of Eden somewhere before he came to Adam's Eden, and he was a perfect anointed cherub that ruled over some form of being that God gave him to rule over before he rebelled. We find also his lightning fall from heaven in Luke, in Luke chapter 11. Uh, we find his lightning fall from heaven in Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Jesus is talking here, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Point 13. God completely destroys Lucifer's kingdom on earth and curses the earth by destroying every bird, animal, fish, city, inhabitant, and all vegetation. He then turns the earth upside down and by means of a great flood makes it empty and a waste. We find this in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, where verse 1 states that God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2 says, And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Psalms chapter 104, verse 5 through 9. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. In Isaiah chapter 12, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 through 26. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. And also Ezekiel 28, verse 11 through 17. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 5-9 through nine. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, but not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The length of the pre-Adamite flood on the earth is also unknown. Number 14. The Spirit of God begins to move upon the flooded earth and the darkness which covered the waters to restore the earth to a habitable state. 
and to create new land animals, fish and fowls and vegetation, and Adam as the new earth ruler. Genesis 1 verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And in Psalm 104 verse 6 through 9, Thou coverest it with a deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled, and at the voice of thy thunders they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys, into the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, they, that they turn not again to cover the earth. The length of the recreation uh, was six days. Now, this is a recreation where God made it more, or made it where it could be lived on again by human beings. And we see this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, through chapter 2, verse 25. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply on the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind and it was so and god made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and every living thing and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and god saw that it was good and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day chapter 2 verse 1 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Thus are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew 
For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the face of the whole of the ground. And the earth Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is a pleasant to the sight and good for food. For the, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first was Pison, that is, it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the land of that, gold of that land is good. There is the delam and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia, and the name of the third river is Hiddekel, that is it, which goeth toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it, and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meat for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meat for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both were naked and they both were and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11 remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 31, verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, the, he shall surely be put to death. Number point number 15, the earth is made perfect a second time and all things in the universe are again in harmony with God as before Lucifer's rebellion, except Lucifer himself, of course, and his spirit rebels, which are still at large in the heavenlies to further God's plan in the probationary period of the human race, should man actually fall. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Job 2, verse 1. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Revelation chapter 12, or 7 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Point 16. The first probationary period, the dispensation of innocence, the length of this period was very short, and we don't know exactly how long it was. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, through chapter 3, verse 24. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. For the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them into Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore she shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god amongst the trees of the garden and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said who told thee that thou was naked hast thou eaten of the tree whereof i commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between me, thee, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall 
bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Point 17. Lucifer now is called the devil or the adversary of God and he's now called Satan. He enters into the restored earth to tempt man and causes man to fall, thus regaining dominion of the earth and all things therein. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 through 44. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be made bread. And Jesus answered, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed him unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If therefore, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when, he, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and great, when great famine was throughout all the land. 
But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, and to a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the times of Elias, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they of the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him into the brow of the hill, whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and heard him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him. And he laid hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and people saw him, and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said, also, and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for Therefore am I sent, and he preached in the synagogue of Galilee. John twelve thirty one. Now is the judgment of this world, and now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Second Corinthians four verse four. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Revelation eleven fifteen. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. Revelation 20, verse 1 through 10. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they set up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Point number 18. Rebellion starts again on the earth by the second ruler of the earth. Man is judged, the earth is again cursed, and enters its second sinful career, and all creatures are brought under the bondage of sin and corruption. We saw that in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve sinned, they were actually cast out of the garden, and a cherub was put at the gate 
to keep them from getting back into the Garden of Eden to the Tree of Life for that they would live forever if they ate of it. And also in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 21. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 8, verse 19 through 23. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Point 19. The heavens and the earth which are now, since the restoration work of the six days, and since the new curse on the earth, await for the time of the second renovation, and the third perfect state of the earth, called the new heavens and the new earth. We find this in Romans 8. Verse 19 through 23, we just read, the whole creation is waiting for this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Hebrews 12, verse 24 through 28. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they re escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 5 through 13. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, for not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Also, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through chapter 22, verse 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues and talk with me saying come hither i will show thee the bride the lamb's wife and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy jerusalem descending out of heaven from god having the glory of god and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of israel on the east three gates and on the north three gates and on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city had twelve foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the lamb and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs, the length uh, and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardonyx, the sixth sardis, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysophysis, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass and i saw no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun neither the moon to shine in it for the glory of god did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and in, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, 
and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates of the, to the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto th these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The second probationary period, point number 20, the dispensation of conscience. We see this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through chapter 8, verse 14. This is just before the flood comes and destroys all the people. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 through 29 tells us of all the different people that actually lived and died during that period. The length of the dispensation of conscience was actually 1,656 years. We can read this in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 through 29. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. In the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam were, after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. And Seth lived a hundred and five years, and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years and he died. And Enos begat and Enos lived ninety years and begat Cainan. And Enos lived after he begat Cainan a hundred and fifteen years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years and he died. And Cainan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalil, and Cana lived after he begat Mahalalil 840 years, and he begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Cana were 910 years, and he died. And Mahalalil lived 60 and 5 years and begat Jared, and Mahalalil lived, af lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Mahalalil were 890 and Five years and he died and Jared lived in 160 and two years and he begat Enoch and Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died and Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived a hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years, and he died. 
And Lamech lived a hundred and eighty and two years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This shall be comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. If you add all those years up, you'll see that it's the, the same number that we have, 1,656 years. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. The third probationary period, the dispensation of human government. This is seen in Genesis chapter 8, verse 15 through 11, verse 9. The length of this period was 427 years. And these are the generations of Shem. We find this in Genesis chapter 11, verse 10 through chapter 12, verse 9. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and 30 years and begat Selah and our effects that lived after he begat Selah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Selah lived 30 years and begat Eber. And Selah lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived 430 years or 430 years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived 30 years and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu 209 years and begat sons and daughters. And Reu lived 2 and 30 years and begat Serug. And Reu lived after he begat Serug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived 30 years and begat Nahor. And Serug lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah. And 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abr Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity. And Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot his, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from the Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land of the unto the place of Sychem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Aram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south now this right here begins also the next dispensation which is the dispensation of promise this is the fourth period the fourth probationary period starting at uh, chapter 11 verse 10 of genesis through exodus 12 verse 51 the length of this period was around 430 years 
Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Galatians 4, verse 30. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Chapter number 23. The fifth probationary period. The dispensation of law. It actually started in Exodus chapter 13, verse 1, and went plumb through to Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, and 11, verse 11, and Luke 16, verse 16, which we'll read here in a moment. The length of this period was over 1,718 years from the Moses to Christ. Matthew 1, verse 11. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Matthew 4, verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. So you can see that the dispensation of law was a long period of time before John the Baptist came preaching the gospel, which changed at that moment unto the dispensation of grace, which is point number 24. The sixth probationary period, the dispensation of grace, started at John chapter 1, verse 17, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, and through Revelation chapter 19 through 21. The length of this dispensation will be from the first advent to the second advent of Jesus Christ and the binding of Satan in the abyss at the end of this age. It has already lasted nearly 2,100 years or 2,200 years. It's, it's way over 2,000 years already. And Jesus hadn't come back as of today, which is the uh, 2007, March the actual 30, 30th. Number 25, the seventh probationary period, the dispensation of divine government or millennium. This is found in Revelation 20, verse 1 through 10. The length of this is given in Revelation 20, 20 verse 1 through 10, as a thousand years. Revelation 20, verse 1 through 10, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image now they had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Point number twenty six. At the end of the millennium, or the thousand-year reign, Satan will be loosed out of his prison, which is the bit, the abyss, to deceive the nations on the earth. Then will come the last rebellion on the earth and the destruction of the human rebels. We just read that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 through 10. Point 27, the second resurrection and the final judgment at the end of the thousand-year reign. Revelation 20, verse 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Point number 28. The end of the earth's 
second sinful career by the renovation of the immediate heavens and the earth and the removal of all the curse and its effects. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 through 23. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24 through 28. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on the earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath pro promised that saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven, and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 13, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which... The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and also in the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to... His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness.